So it's a real privilege to be able to connect with Dr. Alison Ocean. Now, Dr. Ocean was one of the digital opinion leaders that we profiled and identified when we studied the online conversation about pancreatic cancer in the US. Dr. Ocean, welcome. Thanks for joining this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for having me here. I'm excited to talk to you about the role that social media plays in, in medicine. Fantastic. Great. Well, actually, that's a great place to start. I mean, you're, you're a healthcare professional. You're treating patients with pancreatic cancer. And I know that one of the things we saw in the online conversation around pancreatic cancer was you were really, um, I think, you know, pioneering, um, you know, ideas around getting people connected in that kind of conversation. And can I start with asking you, first of all, as a healthcare professional, how do you feel that social media, you know, has benefited your professional work? I, I feel that social media is in some ways the, the fuel that's happening for my practice because nowadays patients and their family members are really, really in tune with the internet. And the first thing they do when they get a cancer diagnosis is Google it. And then when they Google it, they find all these different outlets that mm. want that want to educate people about the disease state, whether it's colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, even other ailments such as heart disease or, or lung disease or kidney disease, whatever it is. And the in a way it's it's amazing because immediately patients can go online and get connected with a community that is similar to what they're looking for and similar to the patient that is is um, dealing with the disease but at the same time it's a little bit of a um, double-edged sword because a lot of the information that's out there sometimes is not vetted and is just right. you know not scientifically scientifically accurate and so as much as I love using social media and online platforms to connect with patients at the same time, we have to make sure that that the information that the patients are receiving is accurate and will ultimately be helpful for them. So do you see your role as um, part of your role as kind of signposting patients to the right source of information? Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, we all have our own outlets on social media that we feel comfortable with, whether it's Instagram, whether it's uh, Twitter or Facebook or even the young kids nowadays with Snapchat and TikTok yeah. and all these other things, you know, I, I, we all have the the, the uh, forums that we're familiar with, and I tend to use the Twitter as my platform for disseminating medical knowledge and for also learning medical knowledge about right. whatever it is because I feel that that is the most reputable way that I can learn and get tidbits of information very quickly about things and updates and new trials that are out there, uh, things that are going on for a different disease state that may not be in my town, but maybe going on at a different academic center somewhere else. So for me, Twitter is the way, is the most frequently used platform for social media to get information. And that's that's what I've been using, but I know that there are other platforms such as Facebook groups and um, other things that the patients like to connect with. Great. And one of the things that we saw when we analyzed the conversation in, in pancreatic cancer, we saw we did see you know quite a lot of engagement among healthcare professionals as well. And you mentioned you use it as a, as a kind of learning resource. H how valuable do you find that, the opportunity to connect with other specialists like you? You know, I, I think it's really valuable. And what I'm amazed is, is that there aren't more doctors on, on Twitter because I learn so much so quickly and it's a great way of keeping up. And I, even as a joke, I started a hashtag that's, you know, doctors who need a, a Twitter hashtag, you know, as, as the hashtag, because yeah. there, there are, and, and I said, you know, tag all the doctors that are not on Twitter that, that should be on Twitter. I just think that it's really advantageous. And in the beginning, it's really hard to, to use it. The first time I did it, I was like, what am I doing? This is hard. I don't, I have to count how many letters, how many characters, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But now it's just so easy. And you'll see that 
even retweeting something. So not even posting new content or your own content, but retweeting what someone else posts can be beneficial to so many other people. So just when I find out something and, and if it's a, a new treatment or a new drug that got approved or, or a, a story of a survivor or, or something mm-hmm. else, I immediately retweet it because that means that someone else is going to see that media content immediately. And all of my followers will, followers will see it immediately. And I don't know of anything faster. I mean, I, there's no way I can introduce a subject, a platform, a article or anything faster than tweeting it out because right. we can't, we really right. can't. Like we don't call 5,000 people at once and tell them right. about a new trial. Right. So, you know, the more followers you have, obviously the more people you're going to reach. And so, you know, I, to me, I think it's so valuable and I wish, I really wish that more doctors were, were on it. And I think slowly that is happening. I think they are increasing participation. Yes, absolutely. We've seen that. And one of the things that we've seen a lot in your conversation is discussion about survivorship and and survival from pancreatic cancer, which was a, a whole new idea to me when I when I came into this and we started doing this study and we saw you talking about you know pancreatic cancer survival. How important has that been for you in your conversation that you're having with with patients online, the patients that are engaging with you? Oh, it's huge. You know, and I I'm actually get, now starting to get referrals from Twitter feed in terms of, oh, I saw you on Twitter. I know that you're on the, at this academic center. I know that you're doing this trial. And I asked them, how did you find out? And they'll either say through Twitter or through my organization that uh, you know about that's called Let's Win yeah. BC. And um, it's it's really starting to take root and really get to into patients' hands, which is awesome. We in in um, one of our goals is to highlight survivors mm. through this platform. The problem in pancreatic cancer is that it is such a horrible disease, and there are uh, many people who perish very fast from the disease. But there are also people that do survive. And we don't tend to hear about that. We tend to hear about all the bad stories. We don't tend to hear about the good stories. And the more good stories that we can put out there, that and why did those people beat the odds? What treatments did they get? What trials did they get? Who took care of them? Et cetera, et cetera. And that's our goal with Let's Win is to get out the good stories, get out the survivor stories, and educate other patients the institutions that where they were treated, the drugs that they received, the the um, trials that they were on, the doctors that they interacted with, the options they were given, all of that can comes out of us featuring a survivor, and we do that through a video series now called our survive. It's our third year now of doing a survivor video series, and each month we highlight the story of a survivor, and it really, really raises hope. It really gives people options and and that's what our goal is and use our, our goal is to use social media to get that information out to patients fast that's so powerful and and, and what you're doing there to, to bring hope to patients and to connect patients out with resources and and as you were saying even patients finding you and and, and you know asking you about trials so would you say that there's a there's a, actually a, a a direct impact that your use of social media is having on pancreatic cancer uh, survival and, and treatment? You know, it's so, it's a hard thing to measure. And, and you know, I, I would love to be able to say that we are reaching enough people so that eventually we're going to have people enter enough trials so that we can actually move the bar in this disease and, and have outcomes get improved significantly. I think that that's going to take such a long time, unfortunately, but I, I have no doubt in my mind that we are helping people by mm. using this platform because at least we're connecting them with experts who know more about this disease. And there are so there's so much medical literature that shows that it does matter the first time you get treated and what you get treated with. It does matter. And getting treated at a multidisciplinary center that has expertise in that cancer or whatever cancer it is, not just pancreatic cancer. It makes a difference because someone who is well-versed in a disease state knows the latest 
research about it, knows the latest treatments, knows the trials, knows the pearls, if you will, mm-hmm. of therapy. Like, oh, maybe I was giving this drug at a really, really high dose, but my colleagues who do this every day never give that dose. And maybe I need to listen more to them about this because they're having more success and patients mm-hmm. are staying on longer because they're not so sick from because they're getting a lower dose of it, et cetera. So that's just an example of how doctors even can interact with other doctors on Twitter to get treatment information, not just the patients, but like I, mm. I use it as a reference to, to get information from other experts, you know, in certain areas that, that I'm not an expert in. That's brilliant. That's, that's so good to hear. Can I ask you one more question? And that is about... Um... The role of, you've talked about doctors and you've talked about patients and you mentioned your uh, organization as well. Um, what what sort of role do you think that the healthcare industry can play in the online conversation with, with doctors such as yourself? You know, the, um, the success in healthcare comes from all part, parties wanting to have a stake in this for the betterment of the patients. And that includes the doctors, the patients themselves, obviously. They're their biggest advocates. The pharma companies, the insurance companies, Mm -hmm. regulatory people, policymakers, all of these people, all of these stakeholders should have a say in the conversation about the treatment of and management of patients with a bad disease. And Um, I think that social media is a way that all of these stakeholders can get more involved. When I go to some of the meetings, uh, consulting meetings with pharmaceutical companies, I tell them about Let's Win, and I tell them about how when we initially started this, we actually had the support of a pharmaceutical company, Mm -hmm. not a financial support, but we had the financial, we had the support of the company to help promote this talk mm. amongst their community. And that was huge because they people want need to find out about it. And our reach is only so much, but if we if we exponentially increase the re- reach of by by spreading it to all the people who who get involved and all and all their contacts, we reach so many more people. So that was vital in the beginning to have a pharmaceutical mm. company to help us get the word out about this chat. And then another um, area that I would love to have um, people more involved in is actually the insurance companies because right. in the United States, it's a huge problem with um, doctors having to uh, advocate on behalf of patients to get certain therapies approved, to get certain therapies covered, um, with insur- you know, covered by the patient's insur- insurance. And if the online conversation is heard by the people that make these decisions in the insurance companies, I think that a lot of policies could change for the better for patients if they listen to the patient's voice. And that's one thing that social media certainly can do for anyone is that they're mm-hmm. going to get the true voice of the mm-hmm. patient mm-hmm. and that can help shape policies moving forward and, and and I think everybody benefits from that. Absolutely. That's really powerful. So in terms of um you say you know th- these are some areas that you're saying you know you would like to see more sort of engagement with the you know the the kind of industry or the industry getting more involved in that conversation. You know, is there anything else that you think you'd like to see from industry in terms of engagement with with doctors such as yourself on and particularly in terms of you know the actual engagement that takes place on social media? Um it could be something as simple as a have a how to set mm. webinar mm. or a how to um, program about social media in general to teach people who aren't that savvy in it how right. to do it and how do you connect with other doctors how do you connect with other patients this is how you do it how do you make your profile how do you make a tweet how do you post in an Instagram thing you know like a lot of people don't know how to do it their kids may know how to do it. You know, if they're older patients, their kids are online, and obviously the kids that nowadays know how to do all this stuff. But a lot of the older patients do not know how to do this. And I think that something as simple as someone, as a company hosting a social media 
webinar mm -hmm. about, you know, the how to mm -hmm. of it all would be really, really helpful and get the word out there about how they can use social media to, to improve their care in, in, in certain ways. So, so that is one idea I have. Mm -hmm. um, they could, um, they could join in these chats that exist in all of the Z states. We right. do one for cancer called Pank Chat. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there's a, a company that is really invested in breast cancer research, they should participate in the breast cancer chat um, or, um, or, or colorectal cancer. You know, they, most of the disease states in cancer have their own online forum and some of them do have monthly chats. I know there's one for lung cancer as well. So I think that that would be a good way for pharma to get involved. Certainly also for other patient advocates or policy makers uh, to get involved in addition to mm. uh, doctors and patients. That is absolutely brilliant. Dr. Ocean, thank you so much for taking the time to talk today. I feel like we should do a series. <laughs> it's been well, a real pleasure. To, uh, to, to, I don't know if I should be the one to educate about the social media. I know how to do it, but but um, there are pros that, that can do it you know, even better than I can. So uh, you I are a pro. Engage, <laughs> I would love, love to engage those. And I do ask them for tips. You know, how do I do this? Or how do I, how do I make sure, how do I import a link so that the, the picture comes up and not just all mm. words and, 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 you know, jumble stuff. How does that, how do, how does, how do I do that? And sometimes I, I look to our social media managers mm -hmm. to help me import data in a way that looks good. It on works the well. So yeah. I'm always looking for ways to improve my uh, online presence. So I, I think I, I, I what, what's great is that you're even doing an interview such as this because it's really an unmet need, I think, for patients that, to find information and to, to connect with other people. And that's really what the power of social media yes. is, is the connection. That's great. Thank you so much. So actually, a great place to connect with you might be on Twitter at your handle. Yeah, my handle is at Dr. Allison Ocean, at D-R-A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, Ocean, like the ocean, at Dr. Allison Ocean on Twitter. And we'll also find you on the Pank Chat hashtag. Yeah, the hashtag Pank Chat. It's the third Tuesday of the month. It's international. So uh, we have uh, many different countries involved. And it's the third Tuesday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, for an hour, and that that happens re regularly. We have different topics, and then also um, Let's Win PC. the w The website is www.letswinpc.org, and a lot of information about pancreatic cancer and connecting to other patients, researchers, and clinical trials is on that site. Excellent resources. Thank you, Dr. Surgeon. Thank you for everything you're doing in this space. Thanks for taking the time today, and thanks. And keep bringing hope to the pancreatic cancer space. Thank you, Daniel. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. Oh, that's fantastic.